All right, guys. Strap in, strap on, give it a shot. I'm going to be reading just about all of them. This will take an infinity amount of time, so I don't know. Rip. Path of Exile 3.2.0 Bestiary League Patch Notes. Bestiary Challenge League. We're calling it Bestiary Bestiary. I want to call it fuck it, Bestiary. All right, Bestiary Challenge League. Challenge Leagues are a great opportunity for a fresh start and a new economy. All of your old character designs are still present in the standard and hardcore leagues, but you're encouraged to join new leagues, complete challenges, and demonstrate your mastery of Path of Exile. With 3.2.0. Bestiary, bestiary. No one cares, guys. Fucking bestiary. There are standard and hardcore, and solo self and standard and hardcore, variations of the bestiary challenge league available. They have the same core mechanics and items. Path of Exile Bestiary lets you hunt and capture hundreds of deadly beasts across Rayclast and then craft valuable new items with the help of the NPC Einhart Frey. Capture a monster highlight and press V to throw an at V highlight. Okay. If the capture fails, the beast will enrage and become more dangerous. The lower life a beast has, the easier it is to capture. Just literally Pokemon. Nets can be found in the world or purchased from Einhart. Better nets make capturing harder beasts easier. Literally Pokemon. Once captured, each beast is tracked in your own beast. Literally Pokemon. <laughs> Time full of information and pictures. <laughs> like, holy shit. You got your Pokeballs, you got your weakened beasts, you got your capturing, you got different tiers of beasts, you got a Pokedex. It's could not be any more similar. Um, each captured beast is kept in your menagerie your fucking poker PC which you can visit by talking to Einhart once enough beasts have been captured you can visit to Einhart uh, visit by talking to Einhart once enough beasts have been captured this should be pretty easy I think three beast threshold or some shit you can use the blood altar in your menagerie to perform beast crafting sacrificing your captured beasts in combat to create and augment items there are some very strong beast crafting recipes available, so we recommend capturing most rare beasts that you encounter. Yeah. Um, you can also hunt four elusive spirit beasts who drop pieces of four new unique item sets. If you somehow manage to capture one, these spirit beasts can be used in beast crafting. Do you have to, like, cap? If you capture them, does it not drop its item then? Hunt four elusive, you can drop four new items. If you somehow manage to capture one, they can then be used in beast crafting. Yeah, does that mean it just won't drop an item, which seems meh. Having to decide whether to capture or kill it, I think. New Challenger League includes a set of 40 new challenges. When you complete 12, you get Bestiary Helmet. 24 gives you Bestiary Wings. Bestiary, Bestiary. Fuck, it's Bestiary, isn't it? And 36 is bestiary portal effect. Chris confirmed that it does a drop. Drops. Use it. Crafting. They do drop items. They drop loot when you sack them. Oh. Alright. Good. Good. From the 19th challenge onward challenge onwards, and for every third challenge after that, you get a totem pole. Oh, lovely. Alright, major new content and features. Let's go. Added two new active skill gems and one new support. Uh, spectral shield throw. We've already gone over that. Lovely. New skill gem tectonic slam. We've gone over that too. But the important stuff is it's kind of a sunder, kind of a mountain strike. Um, consumes an endurance charge to get almost 20% more damage and max number of fishes when it gives you fishes. And requires a mace, sword, axe stuff staff or unarmed so the fisting people are pretty excited about this because you can fist things so that seems good summon phantasm on kills and support which is maybe going to be okay for leveling but i really don't see much potential for this thing otherwise for the core of the game you know young ho bobez thanks for the prime uh, after that, added Abyss to the core game. For more information, changes made to the Abysses and related features, see the Abyss section below. Ah, oh, fuck. Below. 
Uh, Glockwork, Carp, mix with the Primes, Fist the Earth. It sounds like it'd be pretty fun. Oh, lady. Like it's, a, it's the first thing that Base Breakers have gotten in a while, right? Since what? Ice Crash? Alright. Since Ice Crash? Someone correct me on that? Because that is a long time ago. That is a really long time ago. Um, alright. Then what? Introduce the final Elder encounter. This endgame encounter is the single most difficult challenge Path of Exile currently has to offer. Good luck. Add the Elder Orb, obtainable after collecting all of the Shaper's memory fragments. The Elder Orb can be upgraded. The Elder Orb can upgrade any map on your Alice to tier 16. 27 new uniques, 16 of which are exclusive to the Bestiary League. 27 new faded uniques. A few of them already look garbage, so that's a shame. New quest, Valenta's Vengeance. Valenta is sided with Katava. Must be dealt with. Seek her out in Act 10 and defeat her for a skill point. Existing characters who have completed the prerequisite quest mapped to Soatha will already have the skill point and can instead collect the new reward for the tier of Soatha quest. Eh, righto. Add a new Act 10 area, the control blocks. Could this be where Valenta has been hiding out this whole time? <laughs> oh, no. Fucking Jesus. Added 10 new divination cards designed by our supporters. Um, a few of them look pretty cool already. Enabled that rogue exile. Enabled that rogue exile we said we added last time, but this time we really mean it, or do we? Yeah. You fucking hope so. Added two ish new vendor recipes. What does that mean? Two-ish new vendor recipes. God, who even looks for these things? Added six new grandmasters and updated or replaced five others. That's kind of cool. Replacing some. Can you imagine if, the, yeah, they just straight up didn't do anything about this? Like, yeah, we just say some shit like this, but we won't actually do anything. Save us some effort. People will think we may have added content. Minor new content features. The witch can now select lesser poison support as a quest reward upon reaching Lionize Watch. Okay. Don't see how that's terribly useful, but okay. The shadow is no longer offered lesser poison support as a quest reward for reaching Lionize Watch since he should already have it. it. Is offered elemental proliferation instead. Okay. What a useless gem, early prolif. Unique items dropped by bosses in special areas such as the Apex of Sacrifice, the Shaper's Realm, and Breach Domains are now allocated to the area's creator. This also applies to the blessing dropped by Breach Slots. Is that not always the case? Well, it's already worked. I don't agree with people. No friends. Gives a shit. Um, added 3D art for Debion's Dirge. Ooh, that's kind of cool. I'd like to see that. That thing might actually look really nice. That's the only 3D art we added? Oh, son of a bitch. Nice tabular preview from like a literal year and a half ago now. And still no tabular. Fishy Ramen, thanks for the prime. Characters deleted during an event such as a race are no longer removed from the ladder and can still be awarded prizes. Bad? Wait, what race? Bad. LOL! <laughs> Uh, nice events. Made improvements to Zana's Atlas questline. In particular to the sequences featuring the Shaper and Elder. Alright. Completing Zana's Atlas quest now grants Zana experience. Easy I reach level 8 with her now. Zana's Atlas quest. That's like just getting the orbs, right? Fair enough. When you use your stash, the in-game chest now opens. It's like you're really there. Oh. You mean like the little chest top which is going to go beep. And that's time well spent. Milady. That's just ridiculous. Pogus. Yeah, guys. <laughs> Plum and Pavel. Thanks for four months in a row. Content, boys. Um, 
Where were we fucking up to? The patcher now does significantly fewer writes during the allocating space part of the patching process. Righto. Updated several vendor recipes to now output shaped or elder items. All the input items were also shaped or elder. Oh, that's kind of cool. Don't know really what vendor recipes you're doing for that, but sure. That are useful, that is. Improved achievement checking functionality in cases where the achievement server can't be reached. Hmm. Um, streamline designers take shaper orb, take shapers orb dialogue options. Now the one option handles all available orbs. Added support for using harbingers orbs and horizon orbs on the most recent map series. That only applies to standard, right? Because we don't have these orbs. Nice. Improve the appearance of metal throughout the game. That's pretty metal. More skills can now burn the grass. <laughs> Oh shit, more skills can burn the grass. Well, plenty burnt it already, but alright. Level 8 Zana is harbinger. Way to read ahead, you fucking fucksticks. Jesus Christ, quit trying to spoil it for the rest of us. I'm trying to immerse myself in the experience of reading patch notes. Um. More skills burn grass. Purifier has received new skill effects for its sword creating projectile skills. Has received new skill effects for its sword creating projectile skills. Is that the elder dude? Purifier? I have no idea. Glacial Cascades effect now fades out rather than popping out. I don't know what that means, but okay. Um. The Dancing Dervish now carries across any cosmetic effects applied to it when it is manifested. That's pretty cool. I don't think I'm ever going to use it, but I'd like to see that at least once. That'd be kind of nice, right? Um, players with... it looks trash. Like, straight up looks trash. The Dancing Dervish, the fucking new Dancing Dervish faded thing. Trash. But it would be cool to have a look at. Players with accounts created through Steam can now associate an email address to the account through the Path of Exile website. Do this, go to Manage Account, and then change email. Steam users, lol. It's probably better. Slightly improved performance in the Hall of Grandmasters. I like it. Improve the visibility on the Atlas of uncompleted maps that are under the Elder's influence. It's pretty good. It's really hard to see these maps. The map device in the Templar Laboratory now has an awesome new effect. Sounds awesome. You use Steam? Well, yeah, I just lol to you. I mean, like I said, it's probably better, but still. I'm going to look down on you from a lower position somehow. Um, many story glyphs, such as Malachi's letter to Chevron in the Warden's Chamber, have had their visuals updated to be slightly more eye catching. Nice lore. DPS calculations now take whether or not a particular weapon will actually be used, such as when dueling two different weapon types, one of which cannot be used by the skill you're using, into consideration. It doesn't change your actual damage at all, but it does now provide an accurate tooltip. That's a really nice change. Like, we... yeah. have been needing this for a long time. So, you know, when you use a uh, main hand weapon and a stat stick in your offhand, it, like, kind of merges your two numbers. And now it's just going to tell you your actual DPS with only that main hand. So, tooltip hordes rejoice. Which is literally all of us. Improve the way Sire of Shards works with weapon effects. That's pretty good. It's been notoriously trash. Storm Barrier now clearly states that it does not support minion skills. Okay. Added new help panel pages. Um, sick. And continue to incrementally improve the sound, art, effects, and environments. Right, let's have a 30 second break. This will obviously be edited out, I hope. I probably won't edit it out, I'm lazy as fuck. And then some arsehole is going to be like, oh my god, it's just another streamer literally just reading the patch notes, how lazy. Yeah, all the people want, apparently.
Abyss changes. Abyss has been rolled into the core game, exclamation mark. Exciting, right? 10% of the Anyway, you can now encounter Abysses in the world from part two onwards. So no Abysses for the first five acts. Each area has approximately a 10% chance to spawn an Abyss. I mean, it's honestly going to be a welcome change to not have to do abysses all the time. But yeah, 10% of the end is going to be so bad. Abyssal depths can no longer appear in areas below level 70. That's okay, I guess. Stygian of Ice Belts can now only be found by completing an abyssal depths area. The various abyss jewel base types can now only be found from hordes in the abyssal depths and abyssal troves from completing an abyss. You are less likely to find rare abyss jewels. You're gonna to have to like what craft your own pretty much, eh? Which is fine. I mean we craft our own. We've crafted a few of our own this league, I guess. A new sextant mod has been added which grants additional abyss. You know what I'm not gonna miss? Saying the word abyss. Holy shit, have I had enough of that word. Abyss, abyssal depths, abyssal jewels, abyssal Shit, I'm so sick of abyss. It just it's such an awkward word to say. Doesn't feel right, does it? Doesn't roll off the tongue. Like a breach does. Abyss. Anyway. Character balance. Player traps now explode at the end of their duration, triggering their skills. The exceptions to this are bear trap and conversion trap, which still break at the end of their duration. Alright. How's that character balance? Player traps now explode at the end of the... What? There you go. Alright, skill balance. The following trap skills have had their base Money. duration lowered to 4 seconds from 16. Iron Trap, Ice Trap, Lion Trap, Vile Lion Trap, Trap Spell. Each of these traps will now trigger at the end of its duration. Oh shit. That's actually a pretty big deal, isn't it? Falling Trap skills have had their base duration lowered to 8 seconds from 16. Bear Trap, Conversion Trap. Like, that's legit a good thing for traps. And then if you use um, the belt, right? takes off 80% of its duration and then triggers at the end. So it'll be pretty close to instant, right? Don't need some blast anymore. I mean, you don't, but if you do it, you just throw your traps and they'll go off in 0.8 seconds, which is basically instant. That's a pretty big change. Oh yeah, Saboteur, you know, just goes off in four seconds if it doesn't go off. It seems, I don't know, this seems just, yeah. Still no single target? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, you can do some fancy shit, but uh, that seems um, much more playable, right? Maticus Finch, thanks for the two months. I'll say Breach one more time for you. Breach. Anyway, so that's the trap thing. Came out of nowhere. Minion damage has been adjusted, and all minion types except Raging Spirits will now attack more quickly but deal less damage. This also fixes a long-standing issue where added damage will only apply in part to most minions. So many minions will also get up to 50% more damage from sources of added damage. Source of increased attack speed for your minions will now be correctly multiplicative with their base attack speed. Holy minion stuff. I assume that's good or something. I don't know. I'm sure someone cares. The slam skill used by rage zombies can no longer be evaded. Ooh, another mini buff. Volley and projectiles Nova now interact by creating projectile sources to either side of the player based on the number of projectiles. Dividing those projectiles among those sources and then each of those sources firing their projectiles in a Nova. Wish I was smart enough to understand what I just read, but not even gonna try. Just gonna move on. 
Shrapnel shot now converts 50% of physical damage to lightning. Up from 40. That's kind of cool. Herod of Ash now also provides more spell fire damage and can trigger the overkill burn from spells. Oh, it actually the, triggers the overkill burn from spells too. That's sick. No, that's really cool. Like that will legit feel good on some spells. Yeah, I like that. Oh, I heard of Ash is not bad. It's got like 13% more fire damage or 12%, something like that. So, um, seems good. Are you crafting Flame Blast and Worms? Yeah, I mean, it seems like Flame Blast could actually have some good damage and overkill damage and stuff. You don't even need Worms for most of the stuff. Hmm. Um, cool. Many div cards have had their drop weightings and locations adjusted. You should now find a better variety of cards throughout areas introduced in Fall of Oriath. Some maps which had several high value cards have had some of those cards moved elsewhere. I imagine that means you're not going to be running the same headhunter maps. This league, you'll be running different headhunter maps, right? Just to mix it up for you. Or rip vault, maybe. Maybe. Uh, the Dying Anguish Divination card can no longer reward gems with a maximum level lower than 20 or vol gems. The Dying Anguish Divination can no longer reward gems with a max level lower than 20 or vol gems. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Doesn't really matter. Skill gems, which previously had the cast tag, now have the spell tag. Skills which are spells but do not benefit from increased spell damage now explicitly say so in the skill description. This has no impact on gameplay. That's nice though, the clarification. Confusing as fuck. Unique item balance. Strange Barrow Unique Strongbox Encounter has been reworked. It still doesn't contain swarms of things, but if it did, those swarms would spawn more quickly. What? It's got flavor text. I mean, I don't fucking have a clue. But sure, it spawns quicker, I guess, is what it is, is the end goal there. Um, yeah, sorry about ears. I don't know what's going on with that. Death Scythe, thanks for the 10 months, and so far, poop, thank you for the 5 months. Alright chat, we get it. Your ears suck, and I'm retarded. Not everyone has to uh, repeat that. Aware of both of them. Shroud of Lightless can no longer drop with two abyssal sockets. Confirm. R word. Yeah, but does it matter if I'm calling myself R worded? No. Checkmate. Projectiles from the Light Poacher Helmet's triggered skills. Spirit Burst no longer always pierce. They travel 50% slow, which also affects the distance they travel. The damage has been reduced by 25%. This affects all versions of Light Poacher. Self harm. <laughs> yeah. Um, is that enough of a nerf to kill it, hopefully? Maybe. Just have an entire league of a stupid overpowered item, and then, then, then we'll tone it down. I love it. Zerfi's last breath now recovers life over 4 seconds instead of instantly. Now heals you for 450 to 600% of mana cost, down from 800. Divining existing versions of Zerfi's last breath will set it to these values. I don't know if that matters, but probably. This goes Collar now grants 35 to 50% increased quantity of items found from slain normal enemies, down from 50 to 100. You did this to yourselves. And get wrecked. That's a buff to Light Poacher, to be honest. Okay. Um, Durano's Fist now clarifies that the added light and damage specifically applies to unarmed attacks, any attack with a hand that is not holding an item. This means it will not apply to Spectral Shield Throw, as that skill uses a hand that has to be holding a shield. <laughs> oh, there were so many people who were like, oh my god, Doriani's Fist Shield Throw, that's what I'm doing, it's gonna be insane. Well.
At least you didn't have to find out at like level 64 or whatever Duranus Fist is. You just find out now that you cannot do it. Stop trying. Onigarashi's drop chance has been adjusted and by adjusted we mean lowered a lot. I mean I wonder exactly how a lot though. Previously it takes what four to eight hours to farm this thing. Does it mean now it takes like 40 hours of farming Twilight Strand? And second of all, why would you do that to yourself? I know lots of people have been like, I'm still gonna do it cause fun. Why? Just just stop it. Sunblast no longer causes traps to trigger when they expire, as that is now a base property of almost all traps. Oh. Right, so just move that off because it is a thing. Okay, I get it. So that doesn't do anything, just removed some of the text from it, I guess. I did it because I am a scrub. Yeah, but you could put those 40 hours towards not being a scrub. And then you're making progress. The damage increase, this is monster balance from now on. The damage increase from a monster's, monster's rarity, magic, unique, etc. has been made multiplicative with other damage modifiers. This means, for example, that a map mod that increases a boss's damage will be significantly more noticeable. Most, but not all, sources of increased damage, such as specific monster or map mods, have had their values adjusted to compensate. Be careful when fighting unique monsters, especially in mod-heavy maps. Yeah, that sounds insane. Like, damage from map mods was already, I thought, pretty crazy. Like, if you have certain map mods and stack certain map mods, if they now have way more, I don't know. I don't know if it's ever going to be worth running this shit. But yeah, jug, maybe. Jug. Maybe some jug. Potentially some jug. Or some champion. But probably jug. Following monsters are no longer immune to tort. <gasps> though they have... Though they may not... Though they may not retarget based on being taunted. This is primarily to enable new ascendancy passive skills in the champion ascendancy. The Shaper, the Elder, Guardian of the Phoenix, Guardian of the... Literally everything. By God, they did it. Probably doing a champion then. I don't know. Just saying. I needed this to be removed to consider it. So now I'm going to consider it. And see if champion is a thing I may want to run. Sounds fun. Malagari and his maps, map equivalents, as well as Elira's map equivalents... Now use a new version of Detonate Dead, which explodes all corpses in an area after a delay. Hmm. That should be fine after a delay, you know. A virus reassembled now has 20% more life. I mean, that's pretty weak. The dude needs like 100% more life at least. He's really weak. The only Goroshi version of Hillock has more life, it deals more damage, and has learned a new trick. I don't, what? Maybe he spectral throws. I bet he spectral throws. Um, female ghosts have been seen roaming the haunted halls of Oriath alongside their male counterparts. The damage and attack speed of the male ghosts has been adjusted. Confirmed female ghosts are only going to do 70% of the damage of male ghosts. Duressa's spinning swords now play an effect when they appear and disappear, making it easier to see them. Oh, that's so good. That is so much better. Play an effect when they dis- yeah, that's really good. Okay. Tava's heart and the Elder in his unstable phase can no longer be slowed below their base speed. What? This was causing issues with animations playing out of sync with their actions. Oh, so it doesn't mean anything. Because they don't have a fucking base speed. Both the Elder and Katava's heart don't do anything in those phases. Literal nothing. So, fair enough. <laughs> Just animations, righto. 
Uh, Piety now deals 33% less damage with a melee attack in the belly of the beast. Her cleave damage has been increased slightly. Really? Didn't think that was necessary, but okay. Adjusted the cooldown on the Grazing Taurus Sunder-esque skill. It is now considered an attack rather than a spell for mitigation purposes. Fuck's a Grazing Taurus. One of them centaur things that do a Sunder. Okay. That's fine. Bamoth Shifting Darkness. Now better signals when he's using his Vile Detonate Dead skill. This skill now radiates outwards from a set distance rather than all along corpses connected to his target. That's pretty good. Pretty random before. It's a guy in race course. Yeah, like Centaur, dude. Yeah. Uh, Mongrels found in Act 8 can now be desecrated. They have also been renamed to Ruin Hellions. Sure, why not? Following monsters have had their base life significantly increased. Chaos Golem, Arctic Golem, Ice Golem, Lesser Flame Golem, Lesser Ice Golem, and Unearthly Skeleton. Ah, uh, those things are annoying as fuck. Especially the Flame Golems, right? The ones that go and then run away from you. Right? Milady. Or is that our minions? I don't fucking understand. Cyclone X, thanks for the Twitch Prime. Maybe. And Dark Knives, thank you for the Twitch Prime. They're not talking about our columns, right? That's monster balance, it's not our fucking balance. Alright, Dominus and his map variants are now less likely to skip their audio cues with Touch of God and Light of Divinity. Oh, lovely. They're already tanky as fuck. Yeah, they didn't feel like they needed a fucking buff. Alright. Zana now appears to provide protection much closer to the Elder upon defeating it. It'd be much harder to miss her now, her dialogue's now shown in the chat window. The portal phase is now significantly shorter but more difficult, spawning more minions in a shorter period of time using more skills. The minions spawned during this phase target the Shaper more aggressively. Okay, I mean that's easier, right? You just let him kill the Shaper. The Elder's unstable phase is now more difficult and can drop more Elder items if successfully completed. Ah, okay. It's now the only way to obtain the Watcher's un eye unique jewel. Ah, okay. Well, that makes sense then. The Elder's expanding circles during his unstable phase now deal the same amount of damage as the ones in the earlier phase of the fight. This was an oversight. As a result, the skill deals 70% more damage than previously during the unstable phase. There. The Elder's growing Doom Cycle ability is now removed when Zana appears. Lovely. Ah, uh, that's fine. Uh, map and Atlas Balance. There is now a limit to the number of sextants you can apply to your Atlas. Wrecked! The base maximum is 1. But this limit is increased by completing bonus objectives in Zana's quest up to an absolute maximum of 5. So wrecked. Adding sextants above this limit removes the old one. Existing atlases will keep their sextants, though applying new sextants will still remove the oldest one. You can see which map has the oldest sextant by hovering over the new sextant display on your atlas. Oh, that feels good. That feels so good. You are now twice as likely to, likely to obtain maps you have not yet completed on the atlas as maps you have. Ooh. This is intended to help players who choose to play solo complete their atlas. Ooh, I'm a player who chooses to play solo to complete their atlas. That's what I'm talking about. Made changes to how map selection occurs when choosing which maps contain the Elder and his guardians. As a result, this change will be easier and average to encounter the Elder on higher tier maps. Ooh, that's good, finally, fuck. Uh, maps that contain the Elder no longer contain additional monsters or provide Elder rare items from monsters other than the Elder. Oh, I mean, okay, whatever. The change in how monster rarity affects damage increases, see above, has resulted in changes to the Savage and Overlord's map prefixes, as well as death and taxes map mods. These changes can be obtained on 
existing items by using a divine orb. Sure. I don't know really what that's going to mean, but okay. Um, wait, wait, wait. Many maps have undergone monster density change to bring them closer in line with each other. <laughs> monster density changes. Many maps undergone. Sounds good. Hopefully that works well and not just a bamboozle. The Shaper's Ultimate Chaos Bullet Hell skill now deals 70% less damage to minions. That means your golem will pretty much always survive that then. When he runs out of the circle. Because currently he's got like a 50% chance of dying or so. The boss in the Death and Taxes unique map deals less damage with its melee Maybe. attack and should be significantly less likely to one-shot you after transforming. That's not really a problem anyway. Thousand, thanks for 16 months in a row. Um, the treasure piles in the vault map boss encounter and the boss itself now drop fewer items. Maybe. The boss will also use skills that consume treasure piles slightly more often. On average, a vault boss run should now drop a quantity of items similar to other maps of the same tier, whereas previously it was significantly more erect. Merif, thanks for the prime. Yeah. This is what happens when you guys just like beat good things to death. They get nerfed. I run a vault like once every three weeks, and I'm like, yay, a vault. You spam vaults for fucking your entire life, and you get it nerfed. Look what you've done. Milady. Predos think of the 18 months, and shots. All think of the pro. Oh well, Milady. I mean, I don't know. Kind of means nothing now, right? Vault. Just an annoying map. Peruna, the challenger, now signals when it is casting a skill more clearly. I don't know what that is, but okay. The Enslaver's slam ability now deals more damage, more physical damage relative to fire damage and always applies ignite. Ugh, yikes. That's scary. That's the fiery dude. Um, elder dude. More physical relative to fire, so your resist will matter less to mitigate that shit and always applies ignite and that ignite is beefy as hell so that could be sketchy the boss encounter in the desert spring map now has two unique scorpion enemies during the pursuit phase of the encounter this phase also now has the m4 now has m for players to bust open m players to bust open, defeating the boss now enables portals into and out of the boss room. Box and Amphora. Sounds like they made it more annoying, to be honest. But, yeah. I think the idea is that you're going to be doing more rather than having downtime. A jar. Right, eh? Amphora equals jar, apparently. Improve the layouts of the scriptorium and excavation maps. There should be fewer dead ends and empty spaces now. Yeah, I mean, if it actually gets improved, the scriptorium's a really nice map. The armory map is now more linear and should contain fewer dead ends as well. That's really nice too. I like armory. Um, moved monsters a little further away from the entry point of the lookouts map. Yeah, that's fine, I guess. Not really a thing that matters. Decrease the size of the barrows map. Lovely. The vessels of the vile sub-bosses in the Itziri areas can no longer submerge immediately upon activating unless you are very far away. Okay. The orchard map boss room has been redesigned now as labyrinth traps in it. <laughs> Which the vision of justice will try to teleport you onto. Yep. That's what I was missing in my boss encounter design another peer type boss fucking yeah the orchard plaza map bosses now disable all the traps in their rooms when they die their magic packs have been moved to outside the boss room okay grandmasters in the hall of grandmasters now generate two vile souls per second up from one soul per five seconds. 
I don't even know they could use Vile skills, or they were generating souls in general. Crap. Does that mean there's gonna be some asshole Vile Sparker or some shit in there? <laughs> Just wrecks you? <laughs> I don't know. Passive skill tree bounce. This the acrobatics keystone now grants 30% less energy shield, down from 50% less energy shield. Does this do better enable hybrid energy shield evasion characters? For whom acrobatics should be a valid choice. Yeah, I don't know. Um passive skills which increase physical damage dealt by stubs or wands, or damage dealt by wands. Yeah, also increase the damage of ailments caused by those weapons as well. Brings them in line with all other weapon passives. Hmm. Okay. Don't know if you're ever going to be doing Star or Wand Poison shit, but I guess maybe you could. Maybe you could. Ascendancy rebalance. All 19 ascendancies have been reviewed and undergone extensive changes. As a result of these changes, many existing ascendancy and passive skill tree trees will be reset. Alright, um, is there anything for me to actually scan over and see if things have been done? 5% poison duration applied recently, I don't think that's changed. Nothing there I don't think has changed. Trickster, this apparently got nerfed. Um, the void thing, honest the void, 25% chance to gain 25%, 15% chance to gain 50, and 5 to gain 10, which is down from 50, 100, and 200, I do believe. Um, Alright, Zana League Mods, level 2, Onslaught, 2 Chaos, never doing that. Bloodlines, 3 Chaos, maybe. 25% more magic. 20% quantity, maybe. Uh, torment. Areas haunted by three additional ghosts. 20% quantity. Yeah, pretty meh. Fortune favors the brave. One of these would be applied at random. Why didn't it give us a chaos cost? Three chaos. Nemesis. Ooh, Nemesis is back and it's only level 5. Yikes. The headhuntering is real. Beyond level 6, 4 Chaos Orbs. Didn't it used to be 3? It's 3. The fuck. Parandus, level 7, 5 Chaos Orbs, 3 chests. Chance to contain Kadiro. Um. 5C, that seems steep. And then Harbinger, 6 Chaos, contains 3 extra Harbs. I mean, you say lol Harbinger and all that, but... I think maybe you don't know what you're talking about. Because in a league that doesn't have Horizon and uh, Harbinger Orbs and Annulments, probably drop more as well. I'm pretty sure that's probably worth it for three extra herbs. Yeah, could get beachheads again. I don't know, as a rarity, considering you can't get it anywhere else, it's not bad. Anyway, level eight's supposed to be a bit easier to achieve, so it shouldn't be that hard, maybe. Might be able to actually get it within a month, personally. Ember's Binding is far less relevant now that you can get like Shaper Helms and all that, so it's not really, uh, I don't think it's really anything to get excited about. Is there any Harbinger item to get excited about then? I don't think so. Anyway, world changes. You can now enter the control blocks in Act 10. The Weaver's boss room in Act 2 is now smaller, now more difficult to avoid spawning spiders. Rework the layout of the harvest in Act 4, it now has fewer dead ends. All versions of the crypt in Act 7 now contain the bundle of woe unique monster. Oh, huh. okay. Um, disabled the ability to click on Wayland's ship from the Brian King's Reef to travel back to the beacon. You still talk to Wayland to return to the beacons. Prevent accidental back travel. That's nice. 
The Mountain Hounds and Mountain Hound Alphas have been renamed Mountain Hellions and Mountain Hellion Alphas. The Mongrels have been renamed Ruins Hellions. The Vicious Parasites have been renamed Vicious Parasites, as they are actually pretty solid. Oh, they were Viscous Parasites before? <laughs> Alright. Sure, several beasts with the same names as other beasts but different behaviors have been renamed to make bestiary collections less confusing. Maybe. Tentacled versions of goatmen, rowers, hellions, avian wretches, and cobras are now called elder blessed to differentiate them from untentacled forms. Um, thanks for sub, Vogue Goatmen that generate endurance charges are now called Goatmen Stompers. Hellions with Parasites are now called Enslaved Hellions. Crustacean Snipers that don't deal with cold damage are now called Rock Spitters. Crustacean Snipers that do the swishy tail shoot skill are now called Maybe. Crustacean Pelters. <laughs> Val Sofiloft, thanks for two months. Uh, Cave crustaceans that deal cold damage are now called deep crustaceans. Crypt weavers that can flick a strike onto you are now called crypt ambushes. That's fair. Um, croaking chimeras are now called chimeric croakers. All other frog like chimeras are also now some variant of croaker. Sure. Croaking chimeras are now called chimeric croakers. Lovely. Sand leapers that don't leap slam are now called sand skitterers. Rooster demons that can viper strike are now called rooster fiends. The unique beasts in the Chimera Guardian fight have been renamed to differentiate them from differentiate them from skills granted by the bestiary uniques unique items. The Aryan Act Nine's rotting core with sin is now called the Black Core. Twisted Inquisitorium, Vile Side Area, now resembles the Crimson Temple map visually. 27 new prophecies for faded uniques, no voice acting. Deadly Twins prophecy will no longer be consumed by maps whose bosses have been slain by the Elder as Guardians. That's alright. And clarified description of Thaumaturgical History 2, indicating only triggers in Act 2. Sure. Lowered the T override used to determine damage of scorching ray to 1.5 seconds down from 4 seconds. Note that this affects the whole of Grandmasters as that takes PvP scaling into account. T override? Down from what? Is that just purely for Grandmasters? Um, nice PvP balance. Fixed instances of mismatched text and audio between Shaper and Zut. Really? Do we read all the bugs? Do we? Do we really? Yes, uh, I think we do. Seeing us a lot of yeses still. Nobody cares. I'm going to scan over this. And done. All right. I think that's fine. There is a glaring, glaring lack of skill and jam adjustments. Like pretty close to zero as in actual zero. I imagine people are pissed about this. Let me confirm my suspicions. Yep. Top comment. Biggest letdown, blah, blah, blah. No skill buffs, WTF. Oh. People pissed. I like it. 